Would you open your Bible, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and you'll find that on 1799 if you're using one of the blue Bibles that we've provided. Otherwise, it's most of the way toward the end of the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're reading from verses 16 through 21. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are, therefore, Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the good news for us today, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you have been watching the news or reading the paper, you know that last Tuesday marked the 70th anniversary of Germany's blitzkrieg invasion of Poland and therefore the beginning of World War II. It's not the kind of thing that most people want to exactly celebrate. But it is an important time for us to stop and remember the people and the lessons from the past. It turns out that the people of Poland, understandably, are especially sensitive to this anniversary. And even more so as a remember that the Soviet Union joined in with the German attack. It seems that unbeknownst to the rest of the world, Germany and the Soviet Union had previously negotiated to divide up Poland between them. The attack on Poland in September of 1939 signaled the start of five years of bloody war and the slaughter of 50 million people, six million in Poland alone. So even this week as Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin called for joint grief and forgiveness. Many Poles were still bitter toward Russians for the part that they played in defeating Poland at the start of World War II. And even today, 70 years after the start of that war, many around the world still struggle with what it means to forgive those who did them wrong during the war, whether it was the Germans, the Russians, Poles, Americans, Jews, Christians, there was so much harm and so much blame to go around. And the cycle of violent confrontation continues today in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Darfur, elsewhere around the world. The enormity of suffering and loss experienced in war is something that, truth be told, most of us can't really fully appreciate. But the basic human condition of conflict is one that we all experience without having experienced the horrors of the battlefield. Conflict is a normal and necessary part of how we negotiate our needs with other people. When we manage conflict in constructive ways, we actually grow into more mature people in deeper relationship with God and with each other. Our trouble is that more often than not, our experience of conflict is destructive rather than constructive. Our least mature sides give free rein to our sin natures, and we leave a trail of pain in our wake. No wonder conflict has gotten such a bad name. We associate conflict with things like abuse and unforgiveness, broken relationships with irreconcilable differences. There's not a person in this room today who hasn't experienced the bitter pain of conflict with someone they love. 
that hasn't wrestled with swallowing their pride and asking for forgiveness or with extending forgiveness to someone else who we would really rather stay angry with. That is, unfortunately, the awful truth of our broken and sinful state. And so it is with a certain amount of reluctance that we hear the parable of the wicked servant, our first Bible reading this morning, where Jesus teaches us to forgive our brothers and sisters not only seven times, but seven times seventy. Of course, you know that Jesus didn't mean that seven times seventy was the absolute limit. Instead, we're supposed to take the number of times we think we could forgive someone and then multiply that far beyond what we think we're capable of. And it's a good thing, too, because I would have been voted out of my family long ago if it weren't for the graceful teachings of Jesus. Among my many annoying offenses at home that I'm fully aware of are leaving the dirty coffee spoon laying in a puddle on the counter by the toaster to get kind of dried and crunchy on the counter as the day goes on. Taking off my shoes when I come in the front door and leaving them right there in the middle of the landing instead of tucking them away neatly into the closet on the little shelf where they belong. And putting the salsa jar back in the refrigerator on the door in the place where the salad dressing is supposed to go instead of in the back on the second shelf from the top. Oh, those are trivial things to be sure, but such is the stuff of our lives, right? Little things that we do or we don't do, and they all add up to great on each other's nerves. And that makes it hard to live with and to forgive each other. 